Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, we're just going to give it one more second to let everyone come in. Um, okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emily Cosentino Lee, and I am the Marketing and Promotions Manager over at the Santa Barbara Independent. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's uh, Downtown Business Spotlight. Um, this has been an ongoing series. I think we're on episode 41. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Downtown Business Spotlight is a, a weekly interview series that uh, the Santa Barbara Independent co-hosts with Downtown Santa Barbara. Um, and each week we highlight different business owners um, in the downtown district. So we are recording this conversation and it will be up on both independent.com and downtownsb.org. Uh, so if you want to share it with friends or watch it again later, um, you can find them all uh, up there, both this week's and all other 40 episodes. Um, if you have any questions for any of our guests today, please put them in the chat below um, and I'll be sure to get them into the conversation. And uh, with that, I will turn over to Robin. Uh, Robin Elander is our host today and she is the executive director of Downtown Santa Barbara. Um, and I get to host this lovely show with her each week. So it's been- Yay. It has been super fun to connect with you um, each week, Emily, and then all of the downtown business owners. So today we are so excited to be talking about arts and crafts. And we have three different amazing businesses. One that has been in business over 30 years, Arts Essentials. Um, so Sam Winkle Mike White. You should tell me how to say your last name. Winklemeyer. Winklemeyer. As hard as it seems. So welcome to the show um, with Art Essentials. We also have um, Andrew Rawls from the Crafters Library who just opened his business um, not too long ago. So welcome, um, Andrew, I'm excited to have you. And then Rachel Myers and Kelly Almeida um, just are about to open very soon the Board and Brush uh, Creative Studio. So welcome to you all. I'm so excited to have a chat about each of your businesses and learn a little bit more about you personally and professionally. So let's start with Sam, the grand poobah of Art Essentials, which I love that you call yourself that on your LinkedIn. So tell us a little bit about yourself and um, when you started Art Essentials and a little bit about your background. Well, we started, I had a partner originally and we started in 1987, millions of years ago before- Congratulations the on that journey, yeah. oh my goodness. We used to both work at Frizee Paint. You guys probably have no idea or remember Frizee Paint when it was on the corner of Ortega and State Street. Okay. But that's where we, they had a, an art department and we were involved in that. And when they decided to close all their art departments, that's when we got the wild idea, wow, somebody should do something. Um, and it wasn't, we didn't actually totally take it seriously. I went home and talked to my wife and she said, oh my God, you should definitely do that. And so I can safely say that she was really the, you know, the person who actually took it seriously. And then from there, and she also came up with the name too, which was kind of nice, but, uh, <laughs> So basically we started that on a shoestring. I mean, we were in a little little cracker box in the corner of Santa Barbara Street and uh, in Victoria. And from there, we kind of leapfrogged to a few different spaces. You know, other businesses that competed with us came and went and you know, you know how that goes. It's just the years kind of blur. And we finally ended up where we are now. We've been there for about 20 years, but we've already always been on Victoria Street the whole time. Um, in various in incarnations. Um, we had a small little store out at the Fairview Center for a while. Uh, we opened Craft Essentials, which we had for about 10 years in the Turnpike Center. And that place was huge and had about everything you could think of for craft supplies. Um, but 10 years was about enough and it was just running two businesses and one of that size was just way too stressful. So we finally decided to keep it simple and we went back to the one store. Um, so that's basically the Reader's Digest version. My partner and I parted ways a number of years ago and he moved out of the area. So it's just me now. Um, 
and what about you? Are you an artist yourself? Are you a crafter? What got you into wanting to start this business? What's very odd is that most of the people I know who either sell vendor, you know, they're vendor representational people who sell art supplies or the people that own other art stores were a member of a buying group um, that is basically all over the, the states. We have okay. from Alaska to Hawaii to, you know, everywhere. And anyway, hardly any of those people are artists, which I find very peculiar. I mean, it's really singular, but I am an oil painter. I was, I went to art school and I paint and my paintings are in the store if anyone cares. But um, basically, you know, I do paint and I, I actually pick up a brush, unlike most people I know who only really talk of it from the technical side, um, which is fine, but they don't have, apart from occasional demos, they don't really have any hands-on experience. So go figure. <laughs> well, thanks so much for sharing your background. Is that one of your pieces on um, behind you there? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sorry I don't have a better shot of it, but uh, if anybody wants to see more of them, there there's a, quite a few of them down at the store. Uh, better than having them in your closet, at least. So <laughs> and I show it shows periodically and whatnot. So. Wonderful. We'll come back to you to learn a little bit more, but thank you for for all of um, sharing all of that information. Andrew, I want to go with you next since um, you recently opened, but tell us. Um, before you get into talking about the Crafters Library, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and then how you um, came into this business. Absolutely. So I've had a very interesting journey to get me here, um, but I uh, grew up in Los Angeles and went to UC Santa Barbara. So I'm a gaucho. That was my Santa Barbara connection. I absolutely love the town. I'm thrilled to be able to be back here and create a sense of community for artists and crafters and things like that here at the Crafters Library. Um, but for the last decade or so, I was living in Washington, D.C., running a luxury tour company. Um, so very different um, world that I was in prior to the Crafters Library, um, but taught me the customer service skills that I need and all of that to hopefully create that warm and inviting sense here at the library. Beautiful. And you, you had also started, um, you were working, doing some crafts with kids. Yeah, so um, I ended up leaving Washington, D.C. for about a year. I went and worked on a military base in the middle of the South Pacific, about 7,000 miles from my home in D.C., about 2,500 miles from the nearest landmass on U.S. Army Garrison Quadrant Atoll, where I essentially ran um, a middle school and teen center. Uh, and while I was there, part of what I was tasked with doing was creating programming for students. And a lot of the programming was around arts and crafts and things like that. So I was able to get into that. In fact, my boss um, even taught me how to sew while I was there. And that was sort of my gateway into the crafting world, at least more intensely than I was before I was just a hobby crafter. And then when I started sewing, that's when I learned how to like value my time and my products and started selling things, which was really, really fun and super cool. And that sort of triggered part of my brain to think about, hmm, maybe I could make this into a business. Well, super exciting to hear how you got to this point. <laughs> and we're going to hear a little bit more about your business in just a few minutes. But let's check in with Rachel and Kelly. Tell us a little bit about your journey um, to getting to this point, because you're about to open your business, uh, Board and Brush. But well, tell us a little bit about yourselves um, personally. Yeah, so um, I'm Kelly Rose Almeida. I'm a born and raised Santa Barbarian. So I grew up on the Mesa. I went to school on the East Coast to study art history and studio art and ran back to the sunshine where actually that's where Rachel and I met. Rachel hired me at the Santa Barbara Museum of Art where I was a teacher for our um, kids camps, which Rachel will touch on more of and then became the education coordinator there. And then after I traveled for a bit, I came back and really wanted to find a way to just you know, contribute to the community I grew up in. I wanted to, um, you know, raise my kids here and find, have a family here. And so Rachel approached me with this idea of opening up a section of just a place where people can create and um, enjoy time away from work and just have a place to really, you know, enhance their um, artistic side and at any level, which is kind of where we are. And so um, that's kind of where our story began. If you can believe it, that was two and a half years ago. So we are very excited to finally like actually get to this point. So um, 
that's kind of my story and Rachel. And I am Rachel. And as Kelly said, we met at the Santa Barbara Museum of Art where we worked. Um, my background is actually my undergraduate degree is in communication and I have a master's degree, a business degree, MBA. But um, my real experience with art and art workshops comes from my professional experience at the art museum where I worked for 13 years. And as Kelly said, she came home one summer. Um, I was managing our docent, our school and our art camp programs. And so she was looking for a job for the summer and I needed somebody and we just clicked right away. I was like, this girl's <laughs> awesome. So I hired her and um, as she said, she went away and she traveled and I got to the point in the museum where I had been there a long time, but you know, as much as you love people and what you do, you need room for growth. And that just wasn't an opportunity for me at the museum anymore. And so as the universe will be sort of serendipitous and look out for you in that way. I had a friend who called me up and she was like, Rach, there's this really awesome franchise because we're a franchise. And she was like, I'm gonna open one in um, San Diego. And she's like, our friend Ashley just opened one in Santa Monica. And she's like, you have to open one in Santa Barbara. We'll go through this process together. It will be so amazing. And I was like, I don't know, like maybe. I was like, well, let me check it out. And so I checked it out and I was like really intrigued because I thought, well, you know, I managed successful programs at the museum. Like, I think I could do this for myself, but I knew right away, I was like, I don't want to do this alone. I just don't want to do it alone. And I was like, who do I know who I work really, really well with and could ask me to do to come on this journey with me? And Kelly popped into my mind because she had, like she said, been traveling and we were going to get together to catch up anyway. And so we were having, you know, maybe a glass or two of wine and I ran this idea past her and she's like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> and so I wrote, or I called her the next day and I was just like, hey, like, were you serious about that? Because I sort of am. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is history. We went and yeah. visited the franchise corporate office in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Technically it's in Heartland. Mm -hmm. And it just, from that, the momentum was going, we were like, we want to do this together. And so here we are, here we are. <laughs> wow. Well, congratulations on getting to this point. I want to hear more about what the whole business is about and, you know, how you're exploring and what all you're going to be doing in just a moment. But I want to go back to Sam. So much has happened in the past 30 years. Tell us a little bit more about your, your journey with Art, Art Essentials, what um, the types of products you sell, workshops that you have, and how you've been handling this a uh, crazy pandemic that we've been in. Well, back in the day, we were more associated with graphic arts. There was, all, you know, before computers, there was the whole layout and paste up thing. I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember that, but but we used to sell all sorts of transfer things and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And eventually with computers that kind of died. And so it's interesting that you've seen trends kind of come and die and, and certain things change because of technology. And we've had to sort of adjust with the time but we're more of a fine art store, uh, even though our sign still says graphic arts. Um, you know, we carry brushes, paints, you know, spray paints, you know, canvases, panels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And a smattering of craft stuff. We can't have as much as we had at say the craft store, but we have a representation of them. Um, as far as the pandemic is concerned, when it started, um, we were sort of like, oh, wow, you know, we have to close. And we were closed for about a day. And then we thought, well, maybe we could just do curbside. And so we started doing mostly curbside. We let a few people in. And the curbside was such an amazing amount of work. I mean, it's, it's different when somebody could come in and browse your gazillions of products and make their choices themselves. But if you have to do it all over the phone with every person you wait on, oh, my you have God. so many things in there. You have so forever. many things in there. So after doing that for a couple of weeks, we were like, oh, this is for the birds. And then, of course, you know, our employees kind of said, we're not comfortable with this. And we weren't real comfortable. So my wife and I ran the place by ourselves for about two and a half months. And we had reduced hours and, you know, things like that. And it, it went beautifully. And every day that came by, we kept thinking, somebody's going to come in and tell us we can't do this, you know. And nobody ever did. And we kept thinking, well, but the essentials is in the name. So it's an essential business. And, but we never had to use that, that excuse. Um, and we just kept on going and gradually we brought people back as they were comfortable to come back. And there were certainly a lot of people who were looking for things to do. I mean, especially people with kids, you know, people who were just bored, people who were tired of watching Netflix, you know, <laughs> all that stuff. And it was, you know, we were just down slightly last year, which is a 
freaking miracle. Wow. But um, it, it really, you know, it was a lot of work for just two people, but it was an interesting experience. That's, I guess that's the way I would sum it up. Oh, wow. So people were really getting creative. During oh, this yeah. Time. And so people creative. that probably had never lift a brush before. Hmm. So that was kind of fun to see. And I don't know how many of those people we've retained, but who knows? You know, it's like planting a seed. You just never know. Right. Well, that's amazing. What a what a time to get through, but also what a, a beautiful get through this crazy it was an adventure. Time. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And it's wonderful to be moving out of that particular adventure. Yeah. My goodness. Well, thank you. And we'll come back to you a little bit more in just a moment. Um, Andrew, tell us a little about your business and what, you know, when you started, what you've been doing since you've gotten started and how it was for you to open up a business, you know, just still kind of in a pandemic. And how did that go for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the best way to describe what the Crafters Library is, is a co-working space for crafters, plus a retail section, plus we teach classes, plus we do custom orders, plus we do a lot of other things. Um, so <laughs> plus, there's, not plus, like a, a, there's not like an elevator pitch, but um, the, the crux of the, the space, you can get a membership day, week, month, or year that gives you access to our space, our equipment, our machinery, and the staff to help you with your projects. Um, we have a finished retail section where our annual members can sell what they make um, in the store on consignment. So I'm really proud of that because it's a way for locals to get their stuff in front of more people and a way for tourists to buy from true local Santa Barbarians because they're making it here in the space, which is really, really neat. I have a woman who sells her gorgeous wire wrap jewelry from Santa Inez in my store. Um, I have some things on, on that I'm selling that I've made in, in the space and I'm just really excited to get members in here. Um, as far as how I started during the pandemic, the the idea for this store was actually born in um, on a trip I took right before the end of the world in February of 2020. I was in India with a friend and she was asking me over, again, a couple of drinks, because I think that's how all good businesses start, um, <laughs> uh, what I wanted to do. And I had this idea of, of, of a space where you could have you could have access to just a bunch of things because I realized the barrier to entry into like having your own Etsy store is high because you have to buy the machinery, you have to buy the equipment, you have to buy all of that. So I started thinking, how can we lower that? How can we make this more accessible for more people um, and to get more money in their pockets? Um, and that's where I started thinking like, well, if I have a machine, why don't I just let people borrow my machine? And that's where the membership model came in. And then knowing how crafty Santa Barbara is, that's where the consignment model came in. And that's where, and then I started thinking, well, if I'm doing consignment, I should have other retail. So it just sort of organically grew. Um, we've been open for a month and a week, I think. We opened on May 29th, which was Memorial Day weekend. Uh, had an absolutely amazing opening weekend. We had an, uh, an open mic night. We did several different classes, uh, had lots of people coming in through the space. It was, it, the reception from the community has like just it's been overwhelming I've, I've never felt this much support for anything that I've done from complete strangers oh that's um, wonderful and make sure people yeah. know where it is so tell us more specifically yeah. it's in the La Arcata area on Figueroa yeah, so but what is the address there we're located at 9 East Figueroa Street between State Street and Anacapa in La Arcata Plaza um, people may be familiar with the space before I took it over. It used to be Peanuts Maternity. Um, mm -hmm. So if you remember the kids clothing store, that was absolutely awesome. I took over that space. So I have about 2,500 square feet here at 9 East Figueroa. Awesome. And it's such a beautiful space. You've got really high ceilings. Tell us a little bit more about, about the space. And of course, people will need to come in to, to really get a feel for it. Absolutely. Um, so we tried to do as much of the decorating um, in house as possible. So I have um, an entire wall that is plastered with books. It's literally like wallpapered with books and looks super cool. It's always our favorite like Instagrammable moment in the space. And that's actually in our classroom area. Um, we, it also doubles as our private event space because we do host private parties, private events, corporate team bonding, kids parties, bachelorettes, all of that. Um, and we have a private area with our book wall there. Um, I have a fiber arts lounge where I hope people will come in and knit and crochet. Um, all of the furniture there I actually found on Facebook Marketplace. So it's second my furniture from the community. Um, and if, if I had to, if I had to like give a theme to the store, it's really community. So it's, it's getting people in, helping them find one another as a 31 year old moving back to town, not knowing a whole lot of people. It's a little selfish for me because I want to make friends. Um, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to make friends with the members that come in here, but we have 
we have enough space for at least 40 people to do a whole bunch of different types of crafts from our fiber arts lounge to our workstations to our sewing tables to our classroom. Um, just really excited to have people come and use the space and hopefully make friendships on their own. I mean, I'm just waiting to be invited to the wedding of someone who meets their partner here mm. in the store. So that's when I know that I've really made it. Nice. Well, we all need to make new friends after this hiatus of time that we've been able to connect with people, see the people we know. And it's such a great way to, to offer something to the community to, hands on and so many cool things going on there, Andrew. So congratulations. We'll come back to learn a little bit more in just a moment. Um, and Rachel and Kelly, tell us about Board and Brush. What is it all about? How has the journey been to open? I know you have known each other as friends. It seems really exciting that um, you've been able to make this uh, new business opportunity come together for you. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's interesting that you, one thing you mentioned about saying um, that we're friends, which is so true. And sometimes that could scare people about going into business together. But I think what works for Kelly and I is that we had worked together before. We had that history. And even when we both left the museum, you know, Kelly left before I did, and we still maintained a friendship through that. But I think like knowing that you can count on somebody to be your partner and you know the expectations of like what they're going to deliver made it an easy fit. Um, so just that part for us together. But Board and Brush, as I mentioned earlier, is a franchise. And I also think that in terms of new business owners, a franchise is sort of nice. I think of it, but like um, baking, you know, a recipe, they're gonna give you the recipe and then it's up to you to take all that and make it success, right? If you follow the recipe, you're gonna have a really delicious cake or cookies or something like that. And so that's sort of the concept here, but the predominant idea is woodworking and wood signs, um, which we're going to focus on right away. But there's also tons of specialty workshops that you can do here that Kelly and I hope in the future to go. But maybe Kelly can walk you through just sort of the what to expect in a workshop when you come in. Yeah, so just like what Rachel mentioned, you know, we are gonna start with our woodworking signs, which you can see behind us. You assemble it, you distress it, you stain it, and then we have the stencil ready for you to create, which you've personalized. We have over 600 designs you can choose from. And then within the concepts of those designs, you as the um, creator actually gets to personalize it with your name or your birthday or your, you know, um, a uh, for a gift for a wedding, speaking of weddings, you know, you can personalize it to your liking. And then you can put different colors and different concepts on top of it. And you actually walk away with a sign at the end of your workshop that is yours that you've personalized that looks completely different than anyone else's within that workshop. And the workshops usually span, if we have a smaller workshop, it's um, an hour and a half. For some of these larger signs, it's going to be three hours. And but you, the cool part is, even though you're here for three hours, and as Kelly was saying, you walk away with a unique piece, like mm -hmm. Kelly and I could choose the same sign and it could look totally different. But we all know, you know, as, as um, instructors and business owners that people work at different paces. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing about our experience is that we have a, a beer and wine license so we can serve beer and wine, which is really awesome. So if you're working faster than someone else, you can be like, I'm going to kick back and, and have my glass of wine. We play music videos while you're in here. So you might, you know just like hang out and dance a little Start bit while dancing. you wait for the next step, which yeah. is, makes it fun. So that's good. It's like that community, again, you know, just like Andrew was saying, you know, the best creative ideas come with a glass of wine, I guess. And then also, you know, we get to work um, and get inspired by the people around you. Um, each sign is different in this. So just everyone can choose a different sign that they want to create and they can really vibe off each other, you know, just taking what other people are doing, you know, the inspirations on the wall and again, walking away with something extremely unique and personalized. Sounds incredible. Um, I've been walking past there because I, I park in the parking garage behind there, kind of peeking through the windows like when they open and <laughs> looking cooler and cooler in there every day. So when are you planning to open? What's what's the plan? We're so excited to announce we're going to yeah. open a week from today yes. on July 15th. And the even more exciting part is that our website officially just launched before this conversation started. We thought it was going to be this evening, but we like sped it through and we were able to get our corporate office to help us. So it is live. So people can sign up for workshops now right away. Oh, so, wow. That is so exciting. And what are some of the workshops coming up? So you've talked about the the um, wood making. Is it mostly wood making different types of things for the first bit? Yeah, so we really want to focus on the, the main element, which is the wood workshops. Um, it's nice because there's 
frame, you know, you can kind of see maybe behind us, there's frame signs, mm -hmm. you can take pieces, um, there's, you know, multiple pieces of wood that you sort of like, you get to use power tools and um, combine, you know, you drill them together. Um, so we're going to really focus on that. But our hope by the end of the summer is to introduce some of the larger projects. Mm -hmm. They take a little bit longer, but we have planter boxes, lots of fun backyard games like cornhole, um, you can come and make giant Jenga. So we're hoping by summer to introduce that. And then Kelly can tell you about some of that in the future we're hoping for. Yeah. And then we also are going to slowly introduce textiles as well. So we have pillows and we also have, um, you know, washcloths. And just like Rachel said, those planter boxes, backyard games, doormats. doormats. So eventually we're going to really roll out a lot of different options. We even have glass etching. So really starting to get into some of those elements. And those will be specialized workshops that will combine, you know, where we all do a different design on glass or a different design on, you know, pillows and things like that. So we'll really expand in the next six months, probably after the holidays. Um, as she said, planter boxes and backyard games at the end of the summer. And then after the holidays, get into some of those other textiles that people can really start to get creative and um, start to work with other different types of canvases, I guess you can call it. So sounds super fun. I can't wait to see your place in action and tell people specifically where it is because it's kind of hiding a little bit, but in a great way. So where yeah. exactly is it? So we're at 31 East Cannon Perdido. And so for most people who are from here, the landmark is our wonderful neighbors, the Libero. Um, we're in the beautiful uh, historic El Centro building, but we're at the back. So if you're gonna park where you park, you can come down the stairs and see our um, space right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just seeing much right in between. SevTap as well, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Also great new fun great neighbors. neighbors. <laughs> So are you partnering with local wineries or breweries or how are you kind of managing your alcohol sales? That is definitely the plan. Yeah. Um, we're going to start with, for um, the first beer, we're going to start with Draftsman, which has at the Mosaic nearby us and in, um, in Goleta. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, later on, you know, we're going to um, really partner with some great local wineries to have them specialize for their wines. And so eventually we're going to start partnering with all of these incredible wineries in Santa Barbara County, and then, you know, a little bit north into um, um, Paso Robles. And so we really want to make sure that we keep a good selection of local beer and wines to help um, promote um, their products as well. So if you're listening, Tasting Room, hit us up. Hit us we up. want to partner with <laughs> you. We want to partner we with want you. We want to sell your wine and your beer in our shop. Yep. Wonderful. I think these ladies will be very fun to partner with. There's mm -hmm. good energy here in the room. So definitely reach out to them. Why don't you um, share your new website with the community, um, not only in, in the chat here, but um, share how people can find you. Sure, I'm posting um, our website there now, but it's pretty easy. You can go to uh, boardandbrush.com and then a backslash Santa Barbara, and I post it right now. And then of course you can also, you know, follow us just like um, Art Essentials in the Crafters Library. We're on Facebook and Instagram, and we'd love to give, we're actually doing a giveaway tomorrow for Freebie Friday. It's going to be our last Freebie Friday before we open. So we're going to launch that. So um, be sure to follow us at Santa Barbara, um, Board and Brush Santa Barbara on Instagram. And um, we have awesome um, examples as well and inspiration on there. And actually that just reminded me of one more thing. So sorry, um, on a similar note, we're going to open next, a sort of soft, quiet open mm -hmm. next week. But then the Libero is pan planning a community celebration on July 31st, Saturday evening. And so Kelly and I were like, well, we'll just piggyback on that. They invited us to participate. So we're going to do our grand opening um, on that day as well. So it'll be fun. We'll have prizes. We'll be doing more raffles and giveaways. So it's a fun opportunity for people to come and see the, stu the studio without committing to a workshop first and see what we're all about. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, so exciting. That is just going to be such a fun thing to be able to offer all of that for the community and, and such a unique offering too. In each of your different, your businesses are quite different. You have lots of different things on offer. Um, Sam, tell us more about what's coming up for you, um, how people can find your own artwork at um, Art Essentials and anything that people should know about um, coming up. Um, you know, the, the demo and workshop thing kind of went to sleep during the pandemic. So we haven't really gotten anything scheduled for that yet, <clears throat> but that's going to happen eventually. Um, apart from that, the only other thing that we really, I mean, there are a few new products, but basically the big thing is that we're probably going to relocate 
Oh, and really? Probably within the next year or two. Um, the, the church that owns our space has indicated that they want to use it. So it's not a rent issue or anything. It's just a matter of, you know, the space is going away. So oh, wow. we're scouting around. Hey, by the way, if anybody has any ideas out there, just let me know. You know, I mean, uh, well, and of course, we're, not, we're not getting any younger and, and that the legacy, we'd like to keep the store around at some point too. I mean, we've, we've still got some time, but you know, we are moving and then eventually probably we'll want to find somebody who'd like to take it over, but that's down the road quite a ways. The move is going to happen much sooner. So. Well, hopefully you'll be able to keep your place downtown. Is, are you exploring downtown or are you yeah, looking now? Around. It's a little premature. The problem we have is that there's lots and lots of little spaces, like two, 3,000 square foot spaces. And then there's quite the jump up to like 10 and 15,000 square foot spaces, but we're in a 7,000 square foot space now. And there just aren't that many of them. I mean, they just don't grow on trees in this town at least. And so we probably will have to find something that we can combine two spaces together or do something like that. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to remain downtown or not. I have kind of mixed feelings about the whole State Street pedestrian walkway thing. You know, at first it seemed like a good idea, but God, it's just, it's, you know, with all the road construction downtown and all the confusion, it's been very hard for people, especially from out of town to find you. And I know you guys probably have the same problem. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think it's a great idea to make State Street a pedestrian walkway, but it certainly complicates things downtown um, as far as, you know, getting around. Well, we're certainly in a work in progress moment yes. in time because, you know, we, we did that the State Street Promenade in the middle of the pandemic. It was an emergency ordinance. And I think, you know, we're just at a point where we try to figure out what we want it to look like for our future, mm -hmm. how it interfaces with all of the different downtown spaces, how the circulation works, how the signage and kind of all of those things work. So I think um, we're a work in progress and it's, and, it's and it's an exciting time to think about what, what is next, um, but it has brought a lot of um, new foot traffic to the area. I think this past weekend um, and the past several months have really been some of the biggest foot traffic um, weekends to date potentially hmm. ever in, in Santa Barbara. So I think people not only are flocking back um, and I think there's, and there's been more businesses opening here in the last several months, yours included here, um, Andrew, Rachel and, and Kelly. So we'll see how this all kind of plays out, but it, it is a, it's a question mark in time and it's kind of changing how each business interfaces with the street and how, you know, marketing takes place and all of that stuff. So we are trying to figure that out. Um, Andrew, do you want to share a little bit more about um, anything else that you want to make sure people know about your business as we um, begin to wrap, wrap the show and talk pretty soon about what's happening next week? Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I don't think people quite realize what they can do in here, they can do groups. We do private events, private parties, corporate team bonding, corporate retreats. Um, that includes all of the materials, all of the instruction. Um, and we can also um, work with uh, local wineries to provide um, cocktails and beverages, as well as food. We can get it catered. You can bring your own catering in. You can bring your own things in here, too, uh, which is really nice. Um, and we also have specific classes for kids, um, which I think a lot of people are really excited about. In fact, right now, literally in my classroom, I'm t uh, one of my colleagues is teaching our Kids Crochet 101 class. Um, and what's also really cool, unlike some of the other um, DIY stories that I've seen, you don't have to have a specific craft in mind or a specific uh, class to come and take advantage of the space. We always have our glass etching available. Uh, we always have our, you can create your own stickers and tumblers. You can always come and sew. Um, and the staff, and, and that's what the memberships get you, the staff to come and help you with it. Um, we're independently owned, we're not a franchise. Um, and I, I was very deliberate in doing this um, outside of a franchise model. So that way I can really adapt to the, the wants and needs of our members um, to make sure that we're listening to the community. And again, fostering that sense of community to get people in, help them make friends and, and really bolster the thriving arts and crafts world that, that exists in Santa Barbara already. 
We really do have a thriving arts and crafts world, absolutely. And I think a, a few weeks ago, you were mentioning that you were still looking for staff or instructors. Is that still the case? Absolutely, yeah. So we're happy to have folks in the community come in and teach classes. In fact, this Saturday, the woman um, who lives in Solving that makes the wire wrapped pieces, uh, she's coming to teach that class. So we're happy to have um, community members come in and teach. Um, there's another local artist who does silk handkerchief painting who's taught a class here a couple of times. Um, I'm looking for people who want to learn, uh, who, who want to teach how to make soaps and candles. Um, I'm looking for people who want to lead knitting classes. And really, like, if you have a skill that's unique and you think people would be interested in learning how to do that, shoot me an email, come by the store, call me. I would love to talk to you about it. Um, in fact, there's another class that I'm super stoked on. It's a three part series uh, and it's a local woman who just is like, you know what? I don't like fast, fast, fast fashion. I want to teach people how to upcycle their own clothes. Ooh, so good. she's doing a, a class on that um, in, in August. Um, it's going to be to make a really cool tunic, um, a, a very unisex, very gender neutral. And that's also the last thing that I'll say. Our motto here is anyone can craft. So it doesn't matter who you are, what your perceived skill level is, what your gender is. Um, all of those you shed at the door and you come in and you learn to create. Um, I, I may have stolen that motto from Ratatouille, but I think it applies equally <laughs> well here. Um, and I, I really do believe anyone can craft. I'm never gonna call myself an artist, but I will call myself a crafter. Um, and I think there is a difference and there is some overlap, but um, I don't want people to be intimidated by the idea of making something um, because believe me, if I can do something, anyone can do it. Awesome. Well, I love all that good energy there. So much good stuff going on. So artists and crafters and community members head towards Andrew. If you have something that you want to share, a skill that you want to share and um, Solstice community, if you're listening, this is the guy. Um, lots of cool <laughs> stuff to um, do over there. And then um, I was going to ask you one other thing, but I kind of forgot where I was going with that. I might come back to that. Um, Sounds good. <laughs> so, great. Oh, actually, what I was going to say is thank you for having our um, team from downtown Santa Barbara over there, as well as some uh, the visitors, um, is it SB and some others, because we were able to actually craft. I made a really cool um, etched glass, I love Santa Barbara um, piece, and it was so fun. And I have my uh, glass of wine in there, and I'm like, oh, this is so cool that I made this at a local place with Andrew. And so it, it just feels special to be able to enjoy something like that after making it yourself and knowing how to make it, which I didn't know how to do before. So that was pretty cool. So thank you yeah. for that, Andrew. Um, anything else, Rachel and Kelly, you want to share that's coming up? And then Sam will give you one other opportunity to kind of um, let anybody know anything else that you need if you are looking for staff or anything that's coming up that you need support with. Rachel, Kelly, anything else to, to share? Oh, sorry, we couldn't unmute. <laughs> Technical error. Um, I just wanted to mirror Andrew's sentiments because this is something Kelly and I have said all along. It's like we're in each other's brain, Andrew. I also am not an artist and it's very difficult for me because I've you know, spent a career working with artists, fine artists, um, and that's very intimidating. So, you know, going back to when I said I wanted to partner with somebody and I knew the right person, in addition to having worked with Kelly, mm -hmm. I know she's an artist. And I thought, oh, okay, well, Kelly can do all the art stuff and I'll do all the business <laughs> stuff because, you know, my background, I have a, a business degree and Kelly has an art degree. So we're perfect. Um, but I was forced into have to doing, you know, all these signs on for our walls. And we went and did a practice um, workshop before we, you know, we went to the corporate office. And I'm very similar to Andrew. I'm like, oh, I can craft. And it made me think of the days when I was young girl in middle school and high school, a cheerleader, and we would have to make crafts to sell to be able to go to um, camp or to go to competitions. And so um, I truly agree with Andrew's sentiments that like, I think everybody can be a crafter. Um, so don't be intimidated because I know I wasn't. Kelly helped me to see like, it's okay, you can do this. <laughs> yeah, and just something that one of our participants had asked in the chat box about, you know, corporate events and things like that. So, you know, we will be open 
um, you know, Thursday through Sunday for pick your projects where you pick a project out of our 600 you can choose and come in and we'll lead the workshop. But you can also, you know, we, you can rent us out. You can have us for a corporate event. You can have us for a birthday party, a bachelorette party, um, you know, a baby shower. So those types of things you can come and, and rent out and bring your friends and have it be more personalized, have it be catered. Um, so that was a really great question. And, and that's something that we really want to promote again, just making sure that we invite our community to come in here and to create and to um, just really experiment with the wood and use tools that they've never used before. A lot of people, um, you know, they're like, you know, just they don't have the opportunity to use uh, as um, any types of hammers or, you know, a Phillips screwdriver, those types <laughs> of things. So it's really fun to like invite them in and just, you know, kind of um, re you know, invite those different types of items into their um, lives and have an awesome piece that they can then install into their home. And so that's going to be really cool too. So that was a good question. Good stuff. And Sam, you said you need a space approximately how big? We got to just make sure the community knows what they, what we can conjure up for you, hopefully downtown um, in the next year or so, however you need it. Before I address that, I wanted to also comment on what they were saying about the intimidation factor. Sure. Especially in art stores, but also craft stores, although it's a little more user friendly, I think. People tend to just, oh, what am I, I can't even go in there if I'm not an artist. I, you know, I can't browse. I can't, you know, and it, it's something that I, it's been a challenge to try to get, no, just relax. You know, it's just, it's just for fun. Nobody's mm -hmm. been to judge you. Everybody's worried when their kids, you know, you do all this crazy art and then all of a sudden you get to the point where you realize somebody's looking at the art. Oh my God, you know, and then you shut down, which is really sad. So anyway, don't be intimidated. But anyway. And, and um, you also have journals and things yeah. that are not necessarily just art supplies, but and, yeah, some really yeah, cool pieces stuff. in that way. Well, there actually is stuff for non-artists in there too. It just seems like there isn't. I mean, you're looking in the door, but uh, so anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Um, and you have as exhibits as, as well from time to time? Yeah, we do have uh, some things. We don't really do like a first Thursday. We've thought about it, but it, it can, seems impractical sort of in a way, um, but it's tempting uh, whenever that starts up again. Um, August 5th, it will be August starting 5th. Oh, Yes, next month. So okay. hopefully all of you who want to be involved can join us and it might be something to <laughs> really just bring back the attention to the space for sure. We certainly get involved with the Montanari and Solstice and Fiesta and all that stuff too. So that's always fun. Awesome. But as far as space, probably something even maybe a hair smaller, you know, than what we've got right now. We could certainly crunch a little bit. Um, so, you know, somewhere around 6,000 square feet we could probably live with. But, you know, we may have to, like I said, combine two spaces. And we're probably going to start looking real hard about the first of the year just to see what we can come up with. I mean, there's certainly no dearth of spaces out there. It's just a matter of finding it. Find the right and, one. For, that and fits State it. Street, I, I wish they could encourage more mom and pop businesses to come downtown because like you, all of you guys, even if you're a franchise, I mean, it's it's still a mom and pop business. And, you know, you go to some towns like Santa Cruz, we were there recently. They have a bunch of mom and pops on their main drag. You know, how do they do that? You know, I, there have gotta be a way to encourage people, number one, to open businesses, but number two, to find a place that they can afford to run the business in. And Absolutely. Those are some huge challenges. And I would love to see State Street look like, be filled with stores like the green and yellow basket that's gone now, unfortunately, and, and things like that, and not look like every town's mall, you know, or vacant. Well, that's what shows like this are all about, to celebrate mm -hmm. the local businesses and to, to bring attention to what is possible downtown and to encourage people like yourselves who, you know, took a, took a big risk and um, are starting um, or have had thriving businesses, starting thriving businesses and really showcase how that, how that process goes. So that is absolutely what we're looking to do downtown. And really um, there have been quite a lot of um, what we're referring to mom and pops. There's probably been 20 or more businesses that have opened in the past couple of months. Some of them mm -hmm. include um, Kaje Coffee has opened several different locations. So we're excited about that. We have um, an antique store that um, recently opened 727 uh, Designs. And we have 
um, new restaurants. We've got a courtyard, uh, courthouse tavern opening up pretty soon. So quite a number, and we're really um, definitely looking to um, support additional businesses to open downtown. So that's what this show is all about. That's what um, the Downtown Santa Barbara organization is all about. We're here to connect people with those resources and to kind of make sure that once a business is open, we continue to market and continue to make sure that they're front in mind. So absolutely. So good call on that, Sam. We definitely want to support those types of businesses. And speaking of businesses, we have a couple more to highlight next week. So we're going to be um, highlighting books and literary finds. And so the next um, group of people coming on are Molly Weta from the Santa Barbara Public Library. We also have Eric Kelly from the Book Den um, and then Teresa Taylor from Paradise Found. So all really amazing local individuals who have been uh, contributing to our community. A couple other highlights that I wanna share that are happening um, with the Downtown Santa Barbara organization is one is we're expanding the State Street Promenade Market. Um, it is both on the 900 and 1000 block. We're gonna be adding more music and activities like um, Sam was speaking of earlier. We're adding, we're bringing back First Thursday. So if you're interested in participating in highlighting your business, um, you'll want to get your application. Just let us know. Um, we're bringing back April Lee, who has been um, the coordinator of that. And next Friday, the 16th, those are due. So come and uh, be part of that. Um, and then Emily, Lott, the independent is doing all kinds of great stuff. I believe you have a, uh, a suds. Indie hops. Indie hops. Tell us about that and anything else that's going on that um, yeah, you want to make yeah. sure people know about. So Indie Hops is a month long beer crawl that is hosted by the Santa Barbara Independent and it's uh, the whole month of July. So you can start anytime. Um, and there's a passport that's printed in the paper and also the different purchasing breweries will have a little passport um, on their counters. And all you do is go around and you collect stamps by ordering a pint at each of the breweries. And then on July 31st, we're having a passport drop party at Brew House. And so you can come drop off your completed passport um, for a chance to win gift cards to the participating breweries. So another way to support um, our local breweries while also having a drink and maybe you'll come up with a great business idea. That's during right. <laughs> during the crawl. Um, and then we are also, um, sponsoring next Thursday at the Foresters baseball game. So if you go online to independent.com slash Foresters baseball, you can download a free ticket um, and come to the baseball game with indie staff. Um, Ooh, super fun. I want to throw out one other thing. Um, actually, two other things. We're going to be um, doing some downtown mixers at different businesses. So if, and if you are interested in hosting one, we'd certainly want to do um set those up and we're gonna be setting those up um, probably about once a month. So we're excited to highlight different businesses that have just recently opened, have a networking opportunity for the local businesses as well as the whole community to know what's happening downtown. And then um, some tours as well. So we're gonna be connecting with um, local purveyors and just really highlighting the diversity of all of the cool offerings and the people who make downtown super special. So thank you to all of you who make um, downtown super special and congratulations on all you're doing. It is exciting to see what is happening at each of your spaces and I can't wait. So tell people again, Rachel and Kelly, it's gonna be the 15th or 16th uh, when you're, you're opening it. Thursday, July 15th. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we're going to have our big, big party with the libero on July 31st. So we're, that's going to be at five o'clock on Saturday, July 31st. You can come by and as Rachel said, you can just explore and ask questions and we'll be here to welcome you. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. It's great to be with you. And thank you, Emily, for being an amazing co-host. Love um, all of these shows. So 41 today, we're getting closer to celebrating. I think we're gonna, we gotta strategize about maybe doing a, a big celebration in person for either 45 or 50 here coming up. So 
All right. Well, we'll see you all next week. If you, if you have not seen all of our shows and you want to get to know some of our businesses, go to downtownsb.org and you can see all of these interviews recorded and find out about all the different businesses. We have um, different categories you can search. We have a directory. It's a great way to find out and support all things local. All right. Thank you for having us. So much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Keep up Take the care, good. everyone. <laughs>